This is Radio TV Phono Nut, and here's a 5 tube series string AM radio chassis and a dead camera battery to boot. They just don't hold a charge no time anymore. But anyway, this is out of an air castle radio phonograph combination from about 1941. Here's the motor board. I think I showed you this thing in its, in its completeness in an unboxing video. Chassis looks to be in pretty good shape. Doesn't look like it's been molested too badly. The only evidence of work I see is this cathode bypass electrolytic for the output tube having been changed and possibly this capacitor, this main filter having been changed. Lots of rubber wiring here and I'm going to disturb that as, as least amount as possible because I don't want to have any flaking wire insulation. I don't want to have to rewire this. I really want to do the least amount of work as possible to this to get it working reasonably well. Uh, of course it's going to need a full recap but I'm not going to just go in here and wholesale recap this thing and the reason being because we don't know what other problems this thing might have. It looks good but looks can be deceiving. It seems like at least once a week somebody on one of the antique radio groups makes a post about a radio that they've totally recapped and then for some odd reason, despite what the internet tells you, it doesn't play and then they don't know what to do with it. Or they recap it and find out that something major is wrong with it. Like the video I saw where someone recapped a Sansui 1000 tube receiver and found out that one of the audio output transformers was open. So you're just really wasting a lot of time doing all that only to find out that you have a major problem. So it's best to find the major problem before you go to all that trouble and then you can decide which direction you want to go in. All right, let's get this on the bench and put another power cord on it and see what it does. And here's another problem. Just goes to show you that Weller is not the quality product that it used to be. This is my newer soldering station that I've had probably long enough just for the warranty to expire. And the whatever they use to hold the actual heating element to the handle is loose, has broken loose, and the the heating element is about to fall out of the handle. Now if I'm careful I can still use this but next time I go to town I'm gonna procure some epoxy and we're gonna try to put this back together. The older soldering irons, this metal was all one piece and it was actually either screwed or riveted to the handle itself. There was no glue or, or whatever they used to hold this together. So yeah that just just irritates me pretty safe bet if I buy another Weller iron it's going to be a vintage one. I'm not buying any more of their new crap. Well, I got the power cord replaced. I'm checking the filter capacitor. But yeah, my phone's just like Jordan Peer's phone. In fact, I, I've watched his videos and heard his phone ring in the background and thought it was my phone ringing. But anyway, Checking the ESR of the original filter capacitor, that's section 1, it's pretty much very high. Section 2 is about the same, so this cap is shot, needs to be replaced before we even power it up. Because if we don't, it's just going to hum like crazy. So, Alright, I replaced the filter capacitor. This one dangling loose is the across the line capacitor. It's not mandatory for the set to play. Neither is this cathode bypass capacitor, which I'm sure is bad too. I uh, ended up having to replace a couple of wires that I had to move to replace my filter capacitors, and the insulation crumbled off the old ones, so they had to be replaced. Uh, now I think I'm to the point where I can fire it up and see what happens. All right, we have vacuum tube illumination. doesn't sound good. Just a bit of hum, no matter 
where the volume control set in no static, no nothing. All right, a little troubleshooting time here, and a lesson about how something can short when voltage hits it. Before I applied power, I measured from B plus to ground, and I got no short. Now I'm checking from the second filter capacitor to ground. I'm getting 4.4K. Let's check from the first filter capacitor to ground and see what I get. I'm getting a dead short. So something not a complete dead short but 300 ohms from our first filter to ground so we got to figure out what what took a dump on us okay the only thing connected coming right off of the first filter capacitor is the dropping resistor which is I don't know 4 point something K ohms 3.9 K so we know that couldn't be it and then we have the audio output transformer and that's it and the other side of the audio output transformer which by the way the primary winding reads a few hundred ohms the other side of the winding of course connects to the plate of the audio output tube and then we have a capacitor connected between the plate of the audio output tube and the cathode of the audio output tube and from the cathode we have a Oh, let's say a 100 ohm resistor connected between there and ground. All right, whenever I check between the plate of the audio output tube and ground, I read 110 ohms. So this, this capacitor that goes from the plate to the cathode of the audio output tube is obviously shorted. And here we are with the capacitor disconnected and no resistance. Now, if I don't let this turned on very long like that it would have overheated the audio output transformer and burned it open and here's a resistance check of the capacitor dead shorted okay this capacitor is not detrimental for the radio to play so let's fire it up now and see if we get any reception mainly all this capacitor does is it's for tone purposes cuts off some of the high frequencies and helps prevent possible arcing within within the output tube so we won't play it very loud with this disconnected but this disconnected won't keep the radio from playing however with it connected in its current shape it will keep the radio from playing right, I'm hearing a buzz in the speaker Well, I'm getting a couple of stations, but that's a good point. It must be 910, our newest black gospel station. Okay, first of all, I charge my battery. Second of all, I switch soldering irons. This is a Weller SP40L. It's not ancient, but it's got a little age on it. 40 watt iron with a honking tip on it that I've used for mainly other things besides soldering. Uh, and as you can see, this one is actually screwed to the plastic. It's not some glue paste up job that'll come apart like the other one did. I'm not going to be using this on any printed circuit boards, or at least not any, any modern printed circuit boards, but this will do fine until I can get my other iron pasted back together or epoxied back together. Here's the old shorted capacitor. It looks like it says dual seal on it. I have no idea who made it. The color of the capacitor is very close to those solar seal tight capacitors from the 40s. Now those seal tight capacitors, as far as older paper capacitors go, are probably 
the best ones out there. In fact, I still see a good many of them that are still usable. This capacitor that I have disconnected is the coupling capacitor that couples the plate of the first audio tube to the control grid of the output tube. Uh, there was a little bit of a positive voltage on the control grid of the output tube. Not not nearly as bad as what I've seen in some sets, but ideally we don't want any positive voltage there at all. That means this capacitor is leaky and allowing DC to from the to leak from the plate of the first audio tube to the control grid of the output tube. And when that happens, it throws the bias off on the output tube, which will cause it to conduct harder which will eventually lead to tube destruction. Alright, I'm checking the voltage with this capacitor unclipped. I'm checking the output and I should not see any DC at all there since the capacitor is supposed to block DC. But I'm actually getting about two volts there. Like I said, it's not the worst leakage I've ever seen, but there shouldn't be any DC at all there, so that's going to have to be replaced. While I'm, while I'm here, let's check the plate voltage on the first audio tube. And I'm getting about 31 volts. I'd expect at least 50, maybe closer to 60. Now let's see what we have here. We have this big molded capacitor going from the plate to ground. That could be leaky and loading it down. We have this plate load resistor that connects between the screen grid of the output tube and the plate of the first audio tube. That resistor could have gone way up in value and choking our voltage down. But in order to give us an idea about that, let's move back to the screen grid of the, of the audio output tube and see what we have. 62 volts. I would expect way more than that there. Let's see what we have on the plate. 110. That looks more like it. Right, I believe this resistor here is our filter resistor for lack of a better term. Yeah. It composes the Pi Network filter. Our first filter cap coming off of the rectifier will be on this side, and our second filter will be on this side of the resistor. And we have 110 volts on one side and 62 on the other. Now this looks like one of those old dog bone resistors, and it's kind of discolored, but you're supposed to read those body end dot, so if this really is red, I'm going to have to try to clean it up. That would be two, green would be five, and there's no dot, so the dot will be the same color as the as the uh, body, so red, so that would be 2.5K. Let's see what it reads on the meter. We're reading 4K, so that one has definitely gone up in value and needs to be replaced. Okay, we have a capacitor connected between the plate of the first audio tube and ground. Its value is point triple zero five microfarad. And in most instances, that capacitor is, is a mica capacitor. Now, its purpose is to shunt any RF that might be riding on the plate of the first audio tube to ground. If there was any RF there, that would result in squealing and motorboat and then other undesirable effects. Well, we don't have any point triple zero five capacitors, but we have a couple of point double oh one five capacitors that we just wired in series here, and that gives us 675 picofarads, which is close enough. So yeah, that's a little trick you can use if you don't have the right value of capacitor on hand. If you need a larger value, you can put two in parallel to get a larger value, or you can put two in series to get a smaller value. 
Okay, I've overhauled our audio section, including new capacitors and new resistors. The resistors were not that bad off, but they were bad off enough. It brought our voltages up a little bit, but still not quite what I was anticipating. But, you know, this set might have been designed to run the way it is. Okay, play to the first audio tube. We got 35, what do we have? 31 to start with. Screen grid of the output tube, 70. We had about 60 to begin with. So that just goes to show you how off these resistors can be, and it still not affect the readings that much, and the radio will still work. All right, I've changed all the capacitors and check the resistors and can't find anything way off. It still is not nearly as perky as it should be. And that could be an alignment issue, which we're fixing to find out. But first, I thought you might want to hear what might possibly be the last moments of WNBN radio. Uh, this station is no stranger to problems with the FCC, but things really got bad in shortly after the original owner passed away in 2011. I believe his family tried to keep it on for a little while and they couldn't they couldn't do it so it went silent for about nine months and then another somebody else bought it somebody that's supposed to be financially well off which I don't know whether that's true or not but anyway Apparently, they failed to disclose to the FCC that the original owner had passed away, and then I think license renewal time might have come up or something, and they pulled some shenanigans, and the FCC deleted their license. Well, apparently, they got a lawyer, from what I'm hearing and what I'm told, to try to keep their license, and they were granted a a stay to where they could stay on the air until a final decision was made. Well, yesterday someone forward, forwarded me an article that stated that apparently the FCC had refused their uh, request and they're a deleted station now, but as you can tell, they're still on the air. Now, I don't know whether that decision was final or whether they're allowed another appeal, but at any rate, they're still on the air. They might be running in pirate status now. I don't know. But let's get this on something besides... Back into the contest. All right, there's a weaker station. And yes, I'm using a metal screwdriver for this. Stick it in the right hole, we might do something. And a new study has come out that said, oh, there's millions of people that moved from California to Texas. They're liberals that came here for jobs. They're going to vote liberal. Oh, that woke it up. Every person who moves here from China, India, Iran, Ethiopia. Right. 
I think that you well, are which one was on? grossly, grossly looking at the wrong hole again. Oh, that was cute. That's why you use a plastic tool. You don't want to short the B plus to ground. Let me try to do this with both hands and watch what I'm doing here. All right, that woke it up really well. Mental illness is skyrocketing. Yeah, they're angles. That is WSM, so if we can get that, that's all we really need. All right, I think we've about got it. I believe it says the first and only. All around your office, that's even that way. So the main thing wrong with this was the filter cap and the power supply and the shorted plate bypass cap on the output tube. And then other than that, the main thing was alignment that was off like a bat. I changed the other capacitors, but you know that didn't really make any difference, and I didn't really figure they would because they were in. One was the AVC bypass capacitor. Now, sometimes when it fails, it'll cause all kind of squealing and carrying on. And the other capacitors were in the uh, phono equalization circuit, which would have nothing to do with the radio, but I changed them anyway. All right, I'm not going to fool with the phonograph in this section, but we'll get to that some other time. But the radio is working.